I'm somebody that kind of, I take a lot of credit or I take a lot of, not credit, I take a lot of, um, uh, what's that credit? I take a lot of credit. It's important to me to be very honest with myself. It's important to me, right? To not be, to not gas myself up, to be extremely honest with myself, look myself in the mirror and kind of own up to my mistakes, own up to my shortcomings and try and do better. I want to do that to myself to have somebody else tell me, right? Um, and I'm also somebody that's very much um, believes in the doctrine of extreme ownership. Big up Jocko Wilnick, right? He's got a book about it. And it's a bit waffy and stuff, but essentially you accept every thing that happens in your life as something that you can change. Every response, every response is always on you. Because if you put it to outside sources, out, external sources, it's harder to manage. Even if it is somebody else's fault, it's harder to fix that person than it is to fix and correct yourself. Cool, right? That's the kind of thing that kind of go on. But it's a bit weird, whatever, everyone has their thing. <clears throat> so in this particular clip, Brian Callan admits that he's had, he's been a bit, he's been a bit of a funk. He's been feeling a little bit down because... He's been upset that he's not currently selling out theatres and touring the world and doing all this big stuff that people within his maybe peer group are also doing. And it kind of makes him upset. And Brendan also is upset that Brian isn't doing that and it makes him upset to a point where he maybe wants to cry. And the thing that's really funny about this clip is that at no point do either people, either guys, say aloud that maybe their own actions have led to the fact that they aren't where they want to be in their career. They don't ever mention it. It's just, oh, I'm annoyed, I'm pissed off, and it's all these external factors that got me here. But I did nothing wrong to get me in this position. It's really insane. Let me play the clip here so you know what I'm talking about. But it's ridiculous, the lack of fucking self-awareness. It's absolutely shocking. My, if you go my, off odds, it's going to hurt your feelings. My wife put it in perspective for me. I was complaining about, you know... Uh, not having big black dick just i was just complaining about uh i wasn't complaining but i was a little bit bummed out about uh not selling theaters or you know some some of my friends are selling lots of tickets and i was like you know but but i'd sold out that night and you can go down that route i mean she goes once like this, every she two goes, weeks she said to me she goes hey brian somebody took a picture with you tonight and when they walked away they went like that they pumped their fist there's a guy but yeah yeah but but it's like be a little she goes that's be, be, be thankful for that and that's a big deal and i never do that and i never that's do it. a I that's, never that's almost impossible to do i have a huge do. problem with it that's man. almost impossible to do it's like if you're a navy seal and you're in the middle of war and you're like dude we're some badasses no. and they're like what no this no. is what we do dude yeah. Yeah, of the yeah, bullets yeah. flying who gives a fuck that's what yeah. we that's we're used to this wow so it is a s extreme example with the navy seals but it's just a high I, I need example. to be more grateful and i need to be i need to be more thankful for where i'm at i mean and i, I try to practice you should be in theaters though you, you like you talk to any comic you're you're you're, you're a monster you're the one that taught me stand up and i'm yeah. super grateful for that the, out of everyone you know no one gives you the credit you deserve we've been over this yeah, like you're the reason i have i, I can afford private school for my kids for doing wow. stand up. You wow. know, that's all that's all Brian Count. Nah. You're the one that pushed me. You should be a theater act, you know? And I have anger towards people for it that you're not. I'll be I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. I'm not there yet. You should be there. Mm. And it bothers me you're not. Mm. <laughs> you see how angry he got at the end. He got choked up wanting to cry. His wife has a miscarriage, doesn't shed a tear, doesn't run back home. Chris Lear gets exposed as a diddler, sobs on screen. People are thanking him for doing a comedy special, bogey dripping out of his nose, sobbing on screen. Thinking about Bri Bri Brian selling out theatres, he nearly wants to cry. The guy's a psychopath, sociopath maybe, really on that level. Legitimately the things he cries about and gets emotional about. His friend not being able to fucking sell out theatres for... Let's think why. Hmm. Maybe it's the rapes. <laughs> Maybe it's the sexual assaults that you never addressed. And the thing that's really annoying about this whole thing, right, is this. Both of these guys, I look at it similar to like, I'm watching a clip of like Wings of Redemption going down a dark path and essentially going on his pity streams and basically saying he's never going to change and asking for money and shit. 
and DSP doing the same thing, grifting, asking, begging for money, and just being horrible streamers, horrible content creators. I'm first thinking myself, I look at these guys, I feel myself like, how are they still alive? Like, how are they still doing this as a job? Like, how do people, why are people still tuning into this shit? And I realized, oh, I forgot. These guys were the first ones in. So even my views that I'm giving them, even if I'm not watching their content, I'm watching other content that takes the piss out of them, you're still contributing to the kind of economy of them kind of being around and shit. So I think these guys, what they don't realise is that they were first in. They got like, you know, they got kind of first in advantage, whatever that term is. And they didn't take advantage of it. They squandered it. They were kind of first on the whole podcast wave. They were part of the first batch of Rogan friends to appear on these podcasts all the time. They were the first batch of people to have the podcast and then segue off to doing stand-up and using the podcast to sell more tickets thing. They were the first around. So they kind of got a lot of kind of first in advantage. But then when more competition came around, when it required a little bit more quality, a bit more invention, a little bit more creativity, they couldn't rise to the challenge. And then, of course, outside of that, they had their own issues in their personal life that was negatively affecting how they were perceived, who wanted to be in business with them. And obviously, it led to the point where it negatively affected them overall, to the point where now it's obvious to see that all of the bad press they've had over the years has now led to them having real life consequences in terms of affecting their ticket sales and shit. Because people don't give a fuck about them anymore because of the stuff that's been said about them in the press and the stuff that they maybe have been accused of. And in Brian's case specifically, he got accused of rape and sexual assault and shit. I'm sorry, but if I didn't do something like that, I'm fighting tooth and nail, especially if you're Brian Callan. Brian Callan, if you're, if you're paying attention, you'd know he made it really, really late. Really, really late in his career. It, it kind of helped he had rich parents to kind of help him. But he had had to really struggle to make it where he's at, you know? He kind of took a long time to write, finally crack in the acting, to finally crack and stand up and start selling tickets. For the longest time, Brandon, Brendan was selling more than him, even though he started off very, very slow. Sorry, even though he started off, um, you know, um, way after Brian did. So Brian had to work quite hard to get his position. If that's the case... And I had to work as hard as Brian did. You finally get your your kind of your your, your time in the light when you're in your fifties. You get a series um, on Schooled. You get a little spin off with um with the other thing that he did. No, Goldberg is a show, and then the, the spin off was Schooled. You finally get a Batman cameo thing. Like things are looking on the up and up. And then someone comes and says that you raped them and you didn't do it. If that's me, I'm fighting tooth and nail. I'm not giving up without a fight. I'm putting out evidence. I'm going on podcasts. I'm saying my piece. He did none of that. Brian offered no explanation. No explanation as to why that woman said what she said. No counter narrative. No nothing. He just tried to, you know, keep quiet, not say nothing and let it kind of move on. And then you're wondering why you're not able to sell tickets. You're wondering why you're not able to fucking sell out theatres and shit and get other shows. It's because most likely you didn't say shit because you know you're guilty. And people know as well, so they don't want to come and tune in with you. That's why they're not buying out your fucking shows. They're not, you know, you're not getting theatre gigs and shit because you're bad for business. No one wants to book a rapist, unfortunately. Chris is even having a hard time doing it. And he sells. That's the thing with Chris D'Elia. Chris Lee is having a hard time booking some shows and he actually sells tickets regardless of his numerous fucking allegations of the sick shit that he does. So imagine if you're Brian Cannon who's always struggled to sell tickets naturally. So that lack of acknowledgement of that is fucking dizzying. But the really crazy part is Brian, Brendan at the end. Brendan at the end kind of admitting that he knows why. No, he understands he doesn't sell tickets, but he's going to help Brian sell them. Or help Brian should be like what? Let's go back to that bit again. That was really bizarre what he said towards the end. There was a bit where he kind of said, "Hey, you should be sent ticket." It makes me angry. Let's go here. Let's go. I think somewhere around here. I felt like a failure when I got the UFC because I was oh, in King no, Blast. Too bad. Too bad. Too bad. Too bad. Sure. Then that's oh, my. Oh no! That's how too, I, much, that, too, that, much, that, too much. Here, here. I think it's around here. You like you talked in the comic. You're 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 a monster. You're the one that taught me stand up, and I'm yeah. super grateful for that. That out of everyone, you know, no one gives you the credit you deserve. We've been over this, and also he doesn't give you enough credit to deserve. Brendan puts more. Uh, Brendan talks about Rogan more 
than he does about Brian, even though Brian gave me his career. He downplays Brian, actually. He actually mocks Brendan, Brian in public, says he can't sell tickets, says no one listens to his podcast, blah, blah, blah. He actually gives Rogan the respect he should be giving Brian because without Brian, Brendan would be in some fucking kickboxing gym somewhere like he says to Dana White. You know what I mean? He'd be having to do that shit, which he obviously hates to do. Brian actually was the one that was responsible for giving him his career, but he always gives Rogan his flowers and sucks off Rogan more. Yeah, like you're the reason I, I I can afford private school for my kids for doing wow. stand up. You wow. know that's all that's all Brian Count. Nah. You're the one that pushed me. You should be a theater act, you know. And I have anger towards people for it that you're not. Imagine that. Imagine being so deluded and lacking self awareness and being so wrapped in your own fucking ego that you think it's other people's fault that you didn't get a chance to be a theater act. Who do you think it's the fault of? The accusers. So you're victim blaming now. You're saying that you don't believe them. What makes you believe? I would like to know what makes him believe that Brian didn't do what he's been accused of and why that would make you angry. Because if, if it's me and I didn't do it, I'm going to fight for it. I'm going to fight to save my career. They can say what they want, the accusers, but I'm going to make sure that I fight for it and let it be known that I didn't do what they said because I don't want people to think that of me. Do you know what I mean? I care about my reputation type of thing. But they didn't. Why was that? I'll be. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. I'm not there yet. You should. Be ah, there. you it see that? You hear that? You hear that? You hear that? He said, "I'm not there yet." That's Brendan kind of admitting, kind of admitting in his own weird redacted way that he's not a theater actor. Maybe that whole um, what's Talk about black called? dicks? We're maybe that <laughs> whole. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Oh, maybe yeah, that was, whole. Yeah. Um, cancelled gig in the uk finally humbled brendan maybe he's realizing again i think he's dumb anyway he should have done it no i don't know who advised him to book out 2000 capacity fucking arenas i'm um, sorry theaters in the uk when you can't sell out comedy clubs it doesn't make any sense to me it, it's honestly the most idiotic thing i've ever heard in my entire life but this might be finally him admitting yeah I'm not there yet, but you should be. Talk Thank about you. black dicks. We're starting. One more time. You're towards people for it that you're not. I'll be. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. I'm not there yet. And how will he figure it out? Really? How does Brendan figure out a way to become a theatre act? Hmm. I think you have to get good at what you do. <laughs> I think these guys all are looking for hacks. They're looking for viral clips of them laughing like. Ah! All that shit, right? That's, that's, that's how they want to get famous. They want to sell tickets from doing that. But actually, I feel like if these guys focused way more on actually being funnier, putting together better bits, filming better content, and then putting that shit out, that could actually help them sell more tickets, in my opinion. It's a crazy, crazy thing to go about. But actually, if they focused on actually being funnier, stand-up comedians, it could actually benefit them, especially Brendan. If Brenda could turn it around and actually put together some decent bits, like he puts out a little five-minute, ten-minute flipping content piece of him on different stages doing different bits, a little compilation, wax it out there, says nothing about it, and it does numbers, that could actually improve his ticket sales demonstrably more than him talking about fucking COVID or the election or whatever. That could actually work better. But again, it takes work to sit down, write your jokes, hire somebody, pay them, go over it, rehearse it, all the stuff that he doesn't want to do. He just wants to kind of wing it and shit. But if he actually wants to become a theatre actor, the only way he's going to do it is if he becomes funnier. Because at this moment, I think the kind of, I think the good, he doesn't have goodwill. I feel like a lot of people, there's that clip I played of you, of, sorry, what's that? Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, sorry. There's a clip I played earlier of um, Theo Vaughan at Theo Vaughn, I keep saying Vaughn, Theo Vaughn at a theatre, right? And it's sold out. And I feel like a lot of guys, some stand-up comedians, I don't know if you guys agree with me, I think some of them sell tickets on just likability. I think Theo Vaughn's a good example because his specials aren't that great, but he's incredibly funny on podcasts. So I think a lot of people just want to see him and be in his presence. So they buy tickets just to go see him, even though they don't, you know, the show might not be the greatest. They want to just support him and maybe meet him, get a chance to sign, get a picture, whatever. But I don't think Brendan has that. Brendan isn't likable. So if he's not likable, 
and people don't want to root for him, he has to get them with jokes. He has to be funnier. He has to be funny and hope that the comeback story can sell it. Like the kind of, oh, the redemption arc in a, in a weird way. But he's not going to sell tickets being a theatre act on likability. Like how Bert does. I imagine Bert does the same thing. Bert definitely gets people to come and see him perform because people just like to be in his presence. Um, but Brendan doesn't have that thing. I don't think so. But yeah, it's just funny that Br Brian Callen doesn't understand that getting accused of rape can demonstrably hurt your ability to sell tickets <laughs> especially to get booked for theaters and stuff because that's to do with like live nation ticket master Willis malarkey and they don't want to get cancelled too they hate bad press the fact that he doesn't realize that is absolutely crazy to me he legitimately just thinks you know it's it's these other forces <laughs> at play it's like you're not that important bro you're just bad for business no one wants to book you and then have people picketing outside or you know fucking sending a million emails to get you taken off of it it's too much hassle so they'd rather just kind of you know not book you at all and kind of keep it moving that always what they want to do but for some reason that guy doesn't really figure it out doesn't really know for some reason it's fucking weird man it's absolutely weird and redacted